and hello. I'll just do that. Good evening to all the people and happy year 2020. So this is this is big, um, and I don't always say this, and um, I can understand. You know, I'm not that annoyed that I don't get many views. I understand that here I am on my Todd just saying these outlandish things um, <clears throat> why should anyone believe me um, I mean I could you know I could um, make some arguments for why you should I have been right in the past um, basically a year before Brexit I made a video on my previous channel saying that something big was going to happen the next year and okay we all were thinking the asteroid but I was like next year May or June 2016 and as it got round closer I anyway I want to go on about that but it ended up being Brexit and Trump because then I did another just felt this urge to make a prediction about a earth, big earthquake in California um, and then on, I was very, you know, I was sort of imminent, it's going to be in the next few days, and listening to the news the next few days, it was all about Trump. Trump was there at that point, this was sort of March or something, April 2016, and Trump was making big headway in California. So the earthquake ended up being a political one. Um, but apart from that, you know, I've always been completely honest. I always say, you know, how I be guided on these things is through my heart and my feeling. And that if you're able to connect to your soul, you can connect to Mother and Father God. And the truth, you know, it's all so important. And feeling love, you know, and you don't feel good, you don't feel right if you think you're doing something wrong. You know, I've been thinking about lately how what I get most pleasure from is being right. <laughs> Which maybe seems selfish, but <clears throat> I like to look out for the confirmations as well. And when I see things that put me off and make me think that I'm wrong, I do sometimes think, oh shit, I'm wrong, and but quite often I'll, I'll look into it a bit closer, because I get the urge to, I get the feeling that there's, you need to look a bit closer. There's something more into this, and um, generally, you know, there is, <laughs> and it's not always saying you can just find what you're looking for. I mean. You'll see, I'll be in this video putting up some of these images on the laptop that I've been looking at and sort of counting with and putting lines on it. And you can see some things don't fit with, you know, what I'm saying. Um, but then again, you know, then you have to sort of think... So, for example, the problem with this is... Um, we can look back like 400,000 years with ice cores and get an idea of what the temperature was and CO2 levels and things like that in the atmosphere on Earth at that time. Um, and there are clearly patterns. I mean, there's clearly longer waves that, that, that looks like patterns going back through history. But is it 100% reliable? Well, anyway, that's a long time you can go back. I'm going to show you some of these graphs that it does look like the patterns on when you combine the two waves together, the eight, 7, 9, 8 year, we'll say 800, 800 year and the 21, 2800 year waves together, you get this sort of pattern. I don't know if you can see it properly, but and that's kind of what you see 
you see spikes but sometimes they're double spikes and sometimes it's a halfway up you know that's kind of exactly what we do see but whether you can clearly separate them I mean you can a bit I can sort of see the clumps like they are here like sets of 2128 year clumps now with the sol the sunspots and the solar cycles um, I was mistaken the graph that I'd seen on a video was was something else it was a so you know they've got different things for different ice cores and different parts of the planet and then there are some other things called um, a bond thing as some scientists I mean it gets pretty technical but obviously there's going to be a delayed effect but anyway with the sunspots we can see it does fit in with what I've got here this wave so that we're in a peak now and that back in sort of the uh, 16, 1600s there was the Maunder minimum. So that does fit in with this wave. But unfortunately sunspots records don't go back further than that. So they show, they show it coming down a, a low point and then it going up. And that's all we've got. We've only got part of a wave for the sunspots. But from the temperature graphs going back with all these spikes and so now they're not always a one spike sometimes it's a double spike sometimes there seems to be a bit of a lull for a while so and how you know and how delayed is that you know the fact that they're they're checking it in an ice core you know so it's it's once a year when something's frozen you know it's really really we're just looking at a very, very thin slice. You know, it's it's not going to be an excellent sort of picture of the whole place. It's only going to be, well... Hmm. I don't know, maybe if I look into it further, they've done one where they've done a Pacific, ice, uh, an Antarctic ice core and an Arctic ice core. Um, and taken an average. But anyway... There is evidence. There is evidence for this. Um, and But mainly I'm getting confirmation in here that, that, that this is right. That this is a fact. And the big thing being that men are up here at the moment and women are down here. We're both we're both in a, in a lull period of the wave. So, but men are entering the top lull period of the wave, and women are entering the lot the bottom lull period of the wave. Now, the women's wave is two and two thirds longer than the man's wave, and more extreme. And this, and I hope it doesn't sound bad to say this, but this has been making so much sense even from the feelings that I've been getting from my soulmate. Um, lately there's been a, a few times where I've been feeling my soulmate and it just feels like there's so much on, if you like, I was thinking, is this, this so much sort of stuff I have to feel that I've done wrong to her or in a, you know, maybe in a previous life or the burden, the burden, the weight of it felt, you know, heavy, felt big. And now when I'm feeling it and understanding that my soulmate's, you know, bottoming out. So it's quite a good place to be in a city. It's not good. See, this is the thing. You get used to it. These are big, long waves. So there's, you know, the span lifetimes is hardly going to change a lot throughout your current lifetime. But it is where you are. So, so it's a good place to be when you bottom him out because soon you all you've got to look forward to is good stuff. And the same when you're coming up the top is sort of like, it doesn't seem like a great place because all you've got to look forward to is coming down. But you're up. So you don't really mind. It's and it actually gets to that point where you're sort of feeling, um, 
kind of had enough and it just seems to fit so much I mean it does seem to make sense and in a sense I've always sort of said when I've discovered these waves I've discovered them at good times like in a sense when I'm nearly bottoming out and all I've got to look forward to is up or whatever so anyway this time not quite so but it's such a long one it's so gradual you get used to where you are but what I want to say is <clears throat> so currently at the moment with men being up and women being bottom you know, they don't really know it and, you know it's so gradual and everything but it should demonstrate our abilities, like our abilities with our soul, where we are with our soul. So, men, type of soul, they're light, searching truth, discovering truth, shining light on things, just being bright, and you know. Um, and that does seem to to kind of fit in I think I feel like that's that's right that's how how I'm feeling and <clears throat> women um, you know they they are the ones who are at the uh, point where there's you know they're in labor if you like that that's I think the analogy I could best give it's sort of it's that moment that they know is coming it's a it's a big thing that has to come and they have to ride that bottom bit out. It's a long wave for them. But still, they've done it countless times before. But it's, you know, it's, it's what they... It's, and it's like, that's just the feeling I'm getting now. So I'm just understanding why women have been like they've been all throughout my life, in a sense. And it makes me realise that you know, I need to feel a lot more compassion for them. And I think it's partly why, you know, men have really don't get women at the moment at all. Um, because they're not at their best, they're at their worst, that we're not seeing all their gifts that we would see, that we reduce them to sexual objects. And, and they themselves feel reduced to sexual objects. And that's something they can do because it's just physical thing and um, you know slopping on some makeup in the right places and stuff like that and um, you know they can they can do that but you know it's a shallow thing it's not it's not a, a great thing and what they really want from us is just you know some tenderness and appreciation for that they're going through their their pits and so where you know it's obviously you know not feeling it all the time and they're still going to have good periods and stuff like that and still going to have your ups I mean you'll have your 19 year up you'll have your year up and all of the rest of them and uh but that's where they are in their soul abilities. So back in 1060, when we were at the top, their we their soul abilities would have been manifesting much more. And you know, I think the women's soul abilities are are, are not like the man's. Not the searching of the truth and being bright and shiny and warm and everything. But women are they've got this depth of beauty and and they can make things happen they're like the you know the the earth the rock the sub substance they they have sort of like more power than men uh, which is what some stuff i said before so you know we're not we're not seeing so much of that at the moment because they're 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 in a lower place but soon things will change and they'll be coming up and they'll be doing all their wonderful things um, and after from 2060 men are going to be coming down so we're going to be seeing less shining light on truth and I tell ya I'm not mucking about I don't muck about I may uh, 
You may think I am, but I'm not. And one more that we want to, we want another wave. We want another wave on here, right? Because there's six waves on there. Now I know there's there's probably going to be longer ones, but that's not for our concern. Not for a long, long time. Because you know, even thinking about the 800-year wave, that's uh, you know that spans lifetimes, right? I mean, if there's a 50,000 wave, I mean, what are we going to do with that? I don't know if there is, but let's just say I know there is a seventh wave and it's like this. And it's infinite. So think about that because that's nice. There is a permanent upwards. the end of the day with the big picture when all is said and done I'm going up. Am I even recording tonight? I'll just have to check. Use the old video camera for a while. But yeah, I, I wondered if I should say this or not, but I'll say it now. I will try and start making more effort with the videos. A live is rubbish and bits get missed out, so if I perhaps put more effort in, then um, maybe I'll get some more views. Because I kind of think this needs to, it needs to get out. Whether I don't mind it being a quirky, culty thing. But what I want you, I don't want to ask you to share it in that because I understand. Like, and can you recommend me, right? What I want you to do is think about the things I say and take them seriously. Consider them seriously. Take on a belief for a day. Just think, okay, I'll just believe that today. right? I'm not believing it forever, I'm just believing it for today and I'll think about a few things. And tomorrow I'll, or tonight I'll cart it off. You know, no, I gave that a good thought. I thought about this, that and the other and think about it calmly don't allow any rationally fearful thought as there are often fear blocks around truth because you've probably been shown this truth before and you know there was perhaps a reason why you left the truth in the first place so they what happens is there's a truth that you've known about before, you've been back to it before, but there's a fear block around it, and as soon as you go near it, you feel that fear block, and you go, no, I'm not going there. That can happen so quickly in the head, that you don't even realise it, and suddenly you're thinking about something else. You need to take account of those moments, because that shows you, you're sort of bound within these sort of mental barriers. And there's insanity is a myth. You can't just like go mental. But the fear of insanity is real. But it's just a fear, another fear. Fear is error. <laughs> So the truth, you know, thing, this is right? the truth is wonderful. The reality that love and God have made is marvelous. Any fear about it is wrong. I mean, that is an excellent guide that can guide you to truth, and it can help you to believe truth. I mean, it's sometimes hard to believe that something's really good when you've worried for so long that it might not be. And it takes it takes a leap of faith to just try it, and and believe that it could be good. Because you don't want the reason you needs a leap of faith is you don't want to be let down. You've probably been let down before by something, you know, like being told Father Christmas was real, and then finding out it wasn't.
<clears throat> so I can get away with all this smoking, drinking mockers at the moment because because I'm up I'm up, you know. And my soulmate, like teetotal, vegan, non smoker, health health. You almost need to do that when you're down because it's the optimal thing to do. It's the best thing you can do. Be totally sort of like that. I if I did that, I'd be fucking feel bloody amazing. <laughs> but I'm okay with feeling okay, clearly, you know. And that'll be me in about 400 years' time. But it's worse for her, I can't even imagine it for her. She's a, hers is a 2,000 year wave. That's why women have this endurance and patience that men don't have. And I think it's amazing. It's really blown my mind this one. I don't know what it... I guess it's just gonna really teach us stuff. It's gonna make us be able to understand And I mean, probably people just think it's stupid, but they're not thinking about the big, the bigger picture. The bigger picture is the is the awakening of um, God's children. You know, so there's an area, so this whole area, this whole thing, right, was an area before which was just so sort of bland and bleak and out there and mysterious. And now it's starting just to make, makes more sense, but it's complex. Um, I guess I can share this because no one watches my videos, but I figured out, I think I figured out today what the vision I had in Africa in 1996 was. I think I saw how nuclear, how nuclear fusion works. I'll drop that in there. I I saw the um okay I saw a green beam of light come down did I yeah, yeah quite slowly quite slowly and then it separated into like making a triangle and then it bent in and did some geometrical stuff and as it was doing this geometrical stuff, it got faster and faster. 
and then boom drew the rest of the triangle and it was doing this really fast I saw it two times in a row and just today I was always thought what this instantaneous space travel this is what it's about but I was thinking, I wonder how, I was thinking about plasma, so because I was having a conversation at Christmas with my niece. We were talking about the four elements and I was saying about fire, you know, how fire is cool and <coughs> it's the fourth element, so. And they were sort of googling what's a flame and anyway, anyway, and they involved this plasma and then there were these four uh, universal states of matter earth, you know, and you could apply it to earth, air, liquid and fire or plasma, liquid, gas and solid so the plasma so what about that plasma, I was thinking about that plasma and I was thinking about the, the sun and you know how it makes light and then I thought of the vision and kind of got a, a yes from God about that vision had something to do with how sun makes light and um Chatting with a, someone chatting me on me with me on YouTube, Dini, telling me about singing to the sun and how it can do something, make clouds and then rain. She said, "But I don't. We don't want that in England. We want to clear the clouds out of the way." And she was saying, "So I said, yeah, I'll try. I'll try singing to the sun." And I did, and I felt felt in my feeling when I sang. And I've been thinking about the sun more and more lately. Anyway. But I felt the feeling that I have a lot, sort of relate to Father God. And I've been thinking before at nights where the sun is and almost like I could feel it. But this just really helped confirm that I am feeling the sun. And so I said to her, I'll sing to the sun with my heart. I think I've been doing it for a while anyway. And I don't feel like going in my front garden singing to the sun. I mean, <laughs> I want to sing to the sun properly. I don't want these inhibitions and my neighbours think I'm crazy enough. But anyway, so feeling father, feeling father son, you know. So obviously father God is and mother God, they are the whole universe. So every son is father and every hard object, because there's two types of objects, isn't there? There's one that emits light and one that reflects light. So mother is everything that reflects light and father is everything that emits light. And they are the universe. And So that sun is God. It's got God's life force in the sun. It's alive and this planet is our mother and it's alive. The whole universe is alive. So when I'm feeling the sun, I'm not feeling all of God. I'm feeling part of God. And when I'm feeling the planet, I'm not feeling all of Mother God. I'm feeling part of Mother God. But it's still our mother and father God. So we're getting shined on all the time by father, well not all the time, <laughs> well you can because the neutrino is coming out the sun so whether the planet's in the way and it's night time you can still feel God. But obviously the sun rays is something else and it? it's all multi multi layered you know. So you can still feel God fully whether you're detecting it via the sun, whether you're detecting it via one of the the creatures that has God's life force in it, whether you're sensing the own, your own bacteria in your body, which is living 
things that aren't you, so thus they have the life force of God in them. They're in you and on you <laughs> all the time. Someone talked about the rapture, you know, going to meet God in the air. And I said, yeah, as we breathe in, meet God in the air as you breathe in. Still a bit snotty. Pardon me. God is everywhere. I mean, essentially, the atoms our physical bodies are made of are also God's. We've just been lent them. And God has lent us this planet to abode on. If God wasn't bring us, bringing us up at all, we would just be in our own universe, all 11 dimensions. I mean, there might not be much there physically at the moment. For all I know, there might not even be any light in our own universes. Maybe that hasn't happened yet, maybe it has, I don't know. Um, pass. But that's what we'd have. We wouldn't have a universe like this, where there are living planets and where it's stable and calm and yeah, asteroids shoot by and we can see millions of hit planets in the past all part of God's plan you know, God has really done an amazing job well, look, I mean well, my manager of the month God has nurtured us for four billion years and right in the beginning we would have been minuscule specks nearly nothing so God knows us just so much better than we know ourselves you know the way people talk about God like oh yeah cheers God you know and, oh, what well, I'd like to say to God if I met him. I mean, really just, just so ignorant, really just have no idea of how much God loves us. And, you know, which God understands, oh, God knows that too. And, it is, it is a wonderful truth. And um, more and more people are going to be understanding that. So we are in very good times. But the end isn't yet. But we're kind of in a lull period, so things aren't going to get a lot worse. We've, you know, not for women anyway. Men, <laughs> we have, we've had it quite good for the last few hundred years, so um, we shouldn't complain too much, you know. This is the reality that I am feeling. And you know, when you create beliefs and ideas, or beliefs or ideas, you do build a kind of cage for yourself, you know you are. Do you have to live out what your belief is? Because if you truly believe it, that's the reality that it will make. And I get that. I get that. So I know a certain amount of this could just be because I'm creating it. And maybe it will be a nightmare. You know, when I go on these hunches and I go along with it. And, you know, I understand that. There could be something I think of down the line that makes this a complete nightmare. And if it did, then it would be wrong. Because our loving God has not created us a nightmare. And that's how I've been discovering truth. 
but most of the times I've gone on these hunches it hasn't created a nightmare it's created a better place and if you can do that and it's true and sincere and you're not kidding yourself then it's a good thing and it's good for all and that just seems like <clears throat> an appropriate place to end or not Going back, referring back to these um, graphs and stuff that you'll be seeing in this video, there are. There, there, I think there's a bit of difficulty in getting the real information as well, or good, clear information, because the amount of um, you'll see one of these pictures. You know, is someone making the the case that look this isn't climate, we're not global warming, look at the past, who's much warmer, so um, that might be one of the difficulties now I didn't, I haven't looked for the earth expansion events I didn't get around to that, that'll be next I'll be next. Okay, ciao.